Okay, well, um, it's uh, exactly 7 o'clock right now, so I guess I'll get started. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd. This is really nice to, uh, to see everybody here. Um, really uh, thankful to uh, be invited back to uh, SL Languages 2011. Uh, my name is Paul Pravish in the real world, and in Second Life, I'm known as Fire Centaur. Um, I've been in Second Life uh, for a long time, like uh, a lot of you have. I've been here since uh, 2006. Oops, let me turn off my my uh, my um, shared media um, uh, music. Just one moment. There we go. Okay. Um, and uh, during that time, I've I've um, met a lot of educators. I have have an island called English Village that um, uh, various educators have taught at throughout the years. And um, in 2009, I got involved uh, with some great folks at the Slutle project, and uh, I, I was their lead developer for a, for a year. And after that, I carried on the project um, with some of the other developers on my own. And uh, most recently, I've teamed up with uh, Edmund Edgar to to bring to you guys Slutle 2.0. So I'm very very we're very excited about this um, release of Slutle because. Um, in the past, Sludel has been quite difficult um, to configure and use um, because it involved, first of all, having some knowledge on how to set up a Moodle website or, or um, finding a Moodle hosting. And then after that, you had to have some knowledge of, of actually um, installing the mo uh, a, mo a Moodle module yourself. And then once that was all done, you had to configure um, each individual Sludel tool and that involved using note cards. And, and I gave Slutal classes basically for a year at, on Slutal Island. And even after two months, uh, sorry, two weeks or a month, educators still had difficulty setting things up. So it was quite awkward to use. But now, um, with the advent of shared media, um, Edmund and I decided to take a look to see what we could do with it. And we've come up with a way that makes um, configuration uh, a lot uh, easier for educators, which is really, really awesome. Um, and we've also added a bunch of, of new features. So um, what we've been able to do is we've actually been able to uh, eliminate note cards from configuration. Before I start, before I continue, um, I just want to ask um, how many um, uh, of you are um, are familiar with, with Sludel? If you could just type um, in chat um, who's familiar with Sludel, that would be great. Okay, great. And um, has anyone installed a uh, Sludel before, or have they ever had an installation of Sludel on their servers? Okay, so Baldrick has, is great, and uh, Vir Virabal Viralber has, Quartz. Okay, great. So it looks like we, an alpha. Oh, cool, alpha's here too. So it looks like we've got uh, quite a few people who have, who have tried it. A um, few people haven't. Um, Okay, that's great. And has it been easy for you? From a level from 1 to 10, uh, 10 being the most difficult, what level of difficulty would you say has it been to, to, to set up for you? Okay, that's good. Some people can do it fairly easy. Okay. And who's been, um, who's been successful in setting it up? Okay. Okay, this is great. This is excellent. Okay, fantastic. So um, I'm going to uh, just direct your attention over to this slide over here that I've got on a prim. Uh, maybe you might have to move your camera because I've got it in the back here. Um, uh, the blue slide. And I'm just going to go over some of the improvements we've made. And by the end of this uh, session, we've got an hour, I believe. Is that right, Baldrick? Yes, that's right, Hi. Okay, fantastic. So, but I'm just going to go quickly through these slides, and then um, I'm going to res a copy of of uh, Sludel 2 so you can see it for yourself. So, what we've done is in Sludel 2 is we've added uh, the shared media reser. So, before in Sludel we had you'd have a Sludel set, and from the Sludel set you would click on it, and it would give you all the objects. Well, what we've done now is we've actually created a reser with the shared media, and um, so you can see all of the items on the the actual. Um, uh, 
all, all of the objects you can add on the actual shared media screen. The other really cool thing we've added was we've, we've added scenes. So you can now uh, create a scene much like you can with a holodeck and you can add Sloodle objects and non-Sloodle objects to your scene and, when, and you can actually freeze your scene and save it to the server so you can res and de-res them whenever you want. Let's see if I've got a, let's see if I've got a slide here for you that I can show you. Okay, I just changed the slide, and there's a there's a picture of the resort. It's a, a gray looking half sphere, and um, we've created uh, the shared media screen is is an iPhone like interface, and um, like I said, you can you can add your own scenes. Picture here. The problem with shared media is um, I can't show it to you because um, you actually have to log in. So what what I see you won't be able to see. So with scenes, what a user can do is they can just press add scene and you select a name for your scene. And then once this, once you've added a scene, you can start adding things like a web intercom to your screen, to your scene. You can add a prim drop, you can add a vending machine. And then the nicest thing is, is you can move things about. And once you have them in the, in the positions you like on the shared media screen, there is there is a freeze button and when you press the freeze button all of the all of your prims will uh, positions will be saved on the on your sludel server and then you can de-res and res the scene at will um, you can also res multiple scenes so the way this would work is maybe you've got uh, um, four different floors in your classroom so on floor one maybe floor one is a registration scene so you can set up your registration and roll booth and other things like that. Floor two maybe is your quiz scene and floor three is your presentation scene. You can actually res all of those scenes all at once. And then when you're done with your classroom, maybe somebody else needs the space. You can de-res all their stuff, all your scenes, and then they can come with their reser and res all their scenes for their class. So this will help um, educators to um, utilize space, a costly space better in Second Life, we hope. Um, right now, the the Sloodle, the Sloodle Reser only works in Second Life, but we will be moving it to OpenSim in the near future as soon as possible. Um, now let's just go to the next slide. And by the way, I am, I, it, it's kind of hard to, to picture these things as I say them, but I will be um, showing you this, but I'm just gonna go through these quickly. We've also added, um, uh, a shared media scoreboard. And this is really exciting. In the, in the previous version of Sloodle, we created something called the Sloodle Award System, which allowed you to give uh, points to your students. Um, and we also had it rigged up to the quiz chair where you could, um, when the, your students could sit on a quiz chair and then the points would show up on the awards board. Well, what we've done now is we've now created a nicely textured um, uh, pre, uh, sorry, uh, shared media scoreboard. And we've also added the ability for the teacher to add their own type of currencies. So instead of just points, you can add different currencies to your course. So maybe they're magic leaves or gold coins or silver coins or what have you. And then in the scoreboard, you can choose which currency uh, is displayed. And then you can also, and the nice thing is, is when you configure your through the shared media screen, when you configure your quiz chair, you can select right in that configuration scene how many points um, is awarded on a correct answer of a question. And you can also select the currency. Now, we've also added another thing called the Sloodle Backpack. Um, and this is one of my most, uh, I'm excited about this feature the most. Um, in our alpha version of Sloodle, uh, Sloodle 2 that we've re released, we still have some work to do on it. But the backpack feature um, will allow you to give your students um, any type of those currencies, like a, a magic leaf or, or a gold key or whatever. And then we will be creating some objects so that, um, in Second Life which will react to the backpack contents of a, of a specific user. And this will be very uh, fun for a ro uh, role play development. Um, some of this technology was used in the Devil Island Mystery, which I'll give you links to later. Okay, so that's the uh, shared media scoreboard and also the, sh uh, the backpacks. Okay, Professor Merriman asks, real-time contests for students, good simulation for role plays, thanks. Right. Um, uh, 
uh, Professor Merriman had also had some test, early testing of this, of this uh, uh, software as well. Okay, next, um, configuration, okay. I've alluded to this, here's a, here's a screen, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. This is what um, a configuration, the configuration scene looks like. As you can see, it, it, it's like a, an iPhone. And right now, um, it's showing the, the configuration scene for the web intercom. So in, in the web intercom, right inside Second Life on Shared Media, you can select which Moodle chat room the web intercom is connected to. You can also select the other, some other options, whether it should listen to object chat, whether it should auto deactivate, and a bunch of other um, settings. When you press the check mark, the green check mark, what it'll do is it'll actually send, the res will actually send a message to your web intercom with those new settings. Um, before you had to do all this all on note cards. And I'm almost through my slides. I've only got three left and then we can really see the fun stuff. Okay. Oh, so now um, Edmund and I are also releasing a commercial version of, of Sloodle 2. As you know, Sloodle is an open source project. All of the source code is GPL. So what Edmund and I have been trying to do is um, we understand that um, it can be difficult to set up the server if you don't have it, the previous um, hosting and, and server experience. So what we've done is we've created a turnkey solution uh, uh, it's called the Avatar Classroom. And what this does is um, you can, we've attached the reser to a classroom. And when you res the classroom uh, inside Second Life and, and you open the reser, it will take you to a page which will lead you to our Avatar Classroom site. And it'll give you the option to create an account. Once you create an account, you can actually choose a, a subdomain off of avatarclassroom.com. For example, you could choose baldrickcommons.avatarclassroom.com. When you do that, our server will automatically create uh, a Moodle website for you. And um, it will automatically connect your Sloodle classroom to the website. So you will no longer have to do any of those little note cards yourself. As soon as you res the classroom and, and create a site, you'll, it, you'll, already, you'll automatically have a website that's connected to your, to your second life. And, and, it's on, and it'll, it'll all be configured. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. This opens up a, a lot of um, um, possibilities for educators because it just means that within a few clicks, in under, instead of two, spending two weeks to, or, th or two months to get your, your Sloodle set up, it can now take you a couple minutes. So that's what we were trying to do. Um, and and we've, we're almost there. It does work, we're in our alpha stage and, and we're, we're trying to move into beta. So if anybody at the end of this session would like to be included in our private, dem uh, private beta, please let us know and, and we'll get you an Avatar Classroom site. Okay, I'm just gonna go to my, my third last slide. Um, okay, this is fantastic. We'll definitely get those to you, Karila and, and Cicely. Okay, so here's a picture, here's a little sneak peek of the, um, of the Avatar Classroom that we've created. Um, we've pre-built it, um, we've pre-built, uh, we've included a course with the, with the Moodle website that you get. It's a, just a demonstration course. And in the reser, we've included four scenes that, that come included. One is the registration scene in the top left. And that has uh, this little, it's got a nice reception desk um, with a registration enroll computer that, you, that students can enroll. We've also included a really cool, this is not part of Sloodle, this is part of the Avatar Classroom. We've, we've included a uh, shared media chalkboard. So you can actually write messages to your students on a chalkboard using the, the reser as configuration. We've also added um, just a simple uh, meeting area with a bunch of chairs in a circle and a web intercom in the center so you can archive all your text chats in Moodle. We've also, I've also added a Twitter wall, which is, it'll show you your latest tweets if you have, um, if you have a conference so people can tweet and it'll show up in the Twitter wall. That's just something fun. Um, and um, we have this little Dropbox included 
And then the funnest part that, that we did was uh, for the quiz chair and the quiz scene, we've actually um, made a pool of water and uh, we filled it with sharks that attack you if your quiz chair goes in the water, if you get too many questions wrong. So I think that's really fun. I'm gonna show you that in just two seconds. Um, we might have other ver versions of that too. So instead of, instead of uh, sharks, maybe it'll be lions or something. But uh, let's go to the second last slide. Okay, and here's a picture of what the website looks like. We've, we've uh, tried to create a nice uh, Moodle template for you that is um, avatar-esque. Avatar so this is um, a nice template we found, so we hope you'll like it. There's, it comes in four different colors. Um, and that's, that's what you would get when you choose your subdomain on the site. So are you guys ready to see the, the avatar classroom and Sloodle 2? Cool. I, I just want to. I just want to see you all get eaten by sharks. <laughs> okay. Let me let me move this um, these slides around. And I'm sorry. I'm going um, a little bit fast. I just would like to maximize our time that we can check out Slule too. Okay. I'm going to res the classroom, which means I'm going to need a little more space than here. So maybe um, if you could all follow me, maybe we could move to. Um, Let's see here. Is that okay, Baldrick? Do you mind if we uh, if we move out of the? Uh, make sure. No, that's going. fine. Yeah. It's okay. Wherever you want to go. Okay. Oh, actually, Carilla, don't move any farther. I think you might fall off. <laughs> I think we might have to uh, we might have to go in the other direction. <laughs> Thanks for your concern. <laughs> okay. uh... let, me, let me see if this. I'll tell you what. I'll res the classroom first, and that way I'll provide a bridge. One one moment. Let's see if I can res here. One second. Oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, good, 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 good. Let's see. I'll just, I'm just going to build a, a bridge for you guys one moment. I love these new prim limits in, in Second Life. It's, a, it's about time. We can now res prims, which can be a lot bigger than they were before. One moment. It's going to create a bridge for you guys. Oops, I don't want to do that. One second. Okay. Okay, there. Bridge is made. Test, test, test. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Can those other people not get here? Because it looks like they're stuck. Yeah, there's something, there's some barrier here, if you can hear us shouting across. Yeah, I can. You, are you, um, oh, I see it. Okay, um, wait a minute. Let me make the bridge go a little bit higher. Try to go on the okay. bridge from there. If you if you walk on it from that level, that might help. I managed to get my head stuck now. If I can make some stairs for you quickly. Okay. 
There you go. And then we've got the, uh, <laughs> and now I'll make this a little bit smaller so you can get through. Hold on. Okay, now try. There we go. Now they're coming. And we're waiting for Gaward Morgwain. Okay, everyone is here. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we're just waiting for, I think there's a few more. So this is um, the Avatar Classroom. You can see the, the Rezzer. Um, this, when you get Sludle 2, instead of getting this classroom, you would just get this, this gray Rezzer here. Okay, good. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to open this thing up. So when you open it up, uh, it's a shared media screen. Um, most of you probably won't be able to view it because you don't have accounts yet. But um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to open up and I'm just going to res a few of the scenes here. So I'm going to res the uh, registration scene. Be able to save my. Okay, um, let's gonna, I'm going to res it right now. Okay. Going to take a little while. Okay, so this is the registration scene. And the cool thing is, if, uh, if you look at the top, I've got a shared media sign. And this is also one of the uh, objects that you can configure through the reser. If I, if I click on the reser, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to upload a, uh, I'm going to upload what I see. Um, but if I click on the chalkboard, um, uh, sorry, if I click on the sign in the shared media uh, reser, I can actually change the text. And then the sign itself, uh, it's, the sign's media itself will change. Oops, Second Life is acting up on me. One moment, please. Shall I just type, although my time is bad, if you like, I'll type what you say for people who haven't got sound. If Gary, oh, and t Gary, t tell me when you have got sound and I'll stop. And I'm really sorry, especially I'm sorry to Brant because my spelling is bad, but I have to do that if I'm fast. No problem. I actually, um, I, um, I'm having a little difficulties with my CPU. On it. Just one second. Okay, that's better. I've got, um, I'm back. Okay, good. Okay, so what I'm going to do on the shared media reser, I'm going to click on the sign, and can you see above the registration desk, it says registration area. I'm just going to change it to uh, avatar classroom, and I'm going to press the update button. When I do that, a message goes from my reser to the sign, and it will automatically update it to what I typed in on the reser. That's how easy it is to configure things. If you notice on my, uh, on my right, there's also a chalkboard. So if I, um, all the configuration of all your objects happens through this reser. So if I click on the chalkboard on my, on my shared media reser, um, I can type in, uh, hi everyone, thanks for coming, and put an exclamation point, and I press update. And if you notice, the uh, chalkboard will change, and you will see the text that I just wrote. There we go. So that's kind of cool. Um, now um, I want to res some. I'm going to res some more scenes. So I'm going to res the presentation scene. One moment. All of these messages are being. It's really cool because since uh, for all you techies out there, since Linen Lab has come out with the HTTP in, all of our objects are are talking to each, our resers talking to all of our objects through HTTP in. So I've just resed another four floors. Um, to our right now, uh, to our right now is a presentation scene, and I'm going to. And there's a few objects up there. There's some seating. Um, there's a presenter. There's a web intercom. There's a Twitter wall, um, a sign, and uh, the new floors. 
Um, I'm going to res a few more scenes. I'm going to res the uh, meeting, the meeting scene, which will be on the floor three. And then on floor four, I'm going to res. Okay, I'm resing floor three right now. There we go. And now I'm going to res the the fun scene, the quiz scene with the sharks. Okay, here comes scene four. Okay, there's my swimming pool. Where's my shark? My sharks are, are my sharks in the pool? There they go. The sharks are in the pool. Okay, so this is so right around this registration scene. Um, we thought we'd put a registration scene on, on the first floor because if you're a teacher and you want your students to sign up to your website, um, this seems to be the most appropriate kind of metaphor. Um, and on the, on the desk here, I've got um, a little computer screen that says register here. In Sloodle 2, uh, this is actually a registration enroll booth but I've changed it um, for our avatar classroom to look like a computer screen. Um, I just thought that was a little bit more, um, uh, a better metaphor anyways in our case. If you click on this, it'll actually give you a link. Um, oh, <laughs> someone's already in the, uh, <laughs> someone's already getting eaten by a shark. Um, if you, uh, if you click on the registration scene, uh, sorry, if you click on the, I'm getting distracted. If you click on the uh, computer, you'll get a link. It'll take you to your Avatar Classroom website where they can sign up and be part of your, of your, uh, of your, in your course. We've turned automatic registration and enroll on. So if you start using any of these objects, you, um, the student actually won't have to go to the website to sign up for your class unless you want them to. Instead, as soon as they start interacting with the Sloodle objects, their avatar will automatically get their own Moodle account. So let's go, let's, let's go up to the next floor, floor two. On this floor, I've got um, uh, your typical kind of um, presentation scene. I've got some seats there. In the center of the classroom is a web intercom. If I turn this one on, um, users can click on the web intercom to opt in to have their text chat recorded. And um, this is great because all of the text chat actually gets stored in your Moodle website as archived chat sessions. So you, uh, people that didn't make the class can review it later. And on the same floor, there's also the um, assignment Dropbox, which um, you can actually have students submit um, a su prim based assignments by dropping objects into the Dropbox. What happens, when, when that happens, you can actually grade those assignments in Moodle, and the teacher can get notified via an email that uh, an assignment has been selected. Um, also, this uh, right here, we have this little 2.0 presenter, and on your Moodle site, you can actually upload um, images and, um, and websites and video links, and these will show um, using the slideshow. I don't have anything set up right now, so I can't show you. Um, over here, we've just got a simple tw Twitter wall. Through the shared media reser, you can select what the search term will be. I thought this would be cool because nowadays in every conference you go to, they always project on the wall like the hashtag of your conference. So having a Twitter wall might be kind of cool if, if you're using the classroom to have a conference of your own. Then you can tell all your students to tweet and then they'll show up here while everybody's watching your presentation. And this is something really, really simple. It's just a Twitter widget, but I've embedded it on this on this prim, and I've made it configurable via the reser. So right now it's set to Second Life, Second Life tweets. So let's go take a look over here. Um, we're almost at the sharks. This is just another um, simple uh, meeting area. Um, it's the two uh, chairs are in a circle. We've got a tree there. That's not ours. Um, in the corner, I've got the vending machine. This is uh, an object you can use to uh, distribute items to your students. Um, in future versions of Sloodle, we're going to make it so that um, you can, the teacher can specify how much currency you must have before you can withdraw items from the vending machine. And Edmund and I are going to do some really fun stuff with that, so stay tuned for, for updates there. For now, you can just use it as an object giver. Um, all objects placed into the vending machine will show up um, 
as text items on your Moodle website. So students wishing to get items delivered to them can actually just visit your website and press the deliver, much like, much like Second Life Exchange, and the item that they select on their website will be delivered to them. So now here, be careful you don't fall in the pool. The sharks do bite. So over here, we've got, I've got five quiz chairs set up. Um, if you jump on them, um, you should get a, a quiz question. We've got this shared media scoreboard here, which I really wanted to show you today. Um, unfortunately, about one hour before our, my presentation, we got a bug. So I'm not going to be able to show you the shared media scoreboard right now. Um, but what will happen is when you do get the questions right, um, <laughs> That's uh, someone fell in a shark pool. <laughs> so, by the way, you can add more sharks if you like. If you go to the, if you uh, through your, through the scene, you can actually add sharks to your scene, and uh, you'll have more sharks in the pool. So, are, is any of you getting any questions on the on the on the quiz chairs? It looks like some people are getting some questions. Great. I was trying, I really was trying my best to get some freaking lasers attached to their heads, to the shark's heads, but I just ran out of time. Okay. Okay, so we got a question from Karela. Okay. It looks like Stilano's Ling is getting some questions. Okay, good. Okay, question is, uh, what kind of quiz questions can the system handle? Um, right now, the system can handle uh, multiple choice questions, uh, long answer questions, true false questions, and numerical answer questions. And then Cicely asks, can the shark feature be turned off? Um, yes, they can. It's just, um, this is just a pre-built scene. Um, this one only comes with the Avatar Classroom. It's not distributed with Sloodle. This is just one of the extras you get. Um, so all you'd have to do is in your scene, you would just like, you, you could just remove the sharks and then they wouldn't appear. Okay, AI Austin asks, asks Fire, when using media on a prim, shared media, how many uh, concurrent feeds do you believe a classroom area can handle? Okay, very good question. We actually reached this limit. Um, um, your sim, your, an entire sim um, has something like 15,000 15, uh, URLs available, HTTPN URLs. So it depends on your prim limit. Um, so each tool will take up one URL, but when the when the tool is removed, um, that URL will be released. And we've also put in extra um, code to to tell you if you're out of um, URLs. Maya, can I just ask a question on voice, just to clarify on that, because. Because we found that after you went to f six or seven concurrent feeds, you know, with things like uh, uh, a shared whiteboard and other things, that you oh. re you really couldn't support those screens simultaneously. And I'm just wondering if you believe you can support. Oh, I'm sorry. Tens I, of thousands. I was right. I'm sorry. I was actually uh, I was actually thinking you were asking about HTTPN URLs. So uh, in terms of the shared media screens, um, uh, if I understand your question correctly, you're asking how many uh, shared media screens can you display at once? Um, we actually haven't tested that, I, unless Edmund knows. Maybe Edmund can answer that. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I've seen like about five or six work at once, but I'm not sure if, if more, more can. Do you know Edmund?
I think Edmund's been eaten by a shark, actually. Last time I saw him. He was my first set, test subject, actually, on this on this uh, mission. I don't think he was too happy about it. <laughs> you know, you know, the shark sounds are, 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 are very cute and funny, but when you're actually then talking while that's going on, there needs to be a rapid way of switching them off. I appreciate they can be switched off, you know, by going to the sound control panel. But maybe maybe an educator way of being able to switch them off um, while discussions taking place would be good. Fire. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you're actually. Um, I'm just going to delete them. Actually, I just. It's not just distracting. I'm, I'm I'm hearing you at about a tenth of the level of the sharks. <laughs> there. Well, the cool the beauty of the the beauty of the shared media is while you're saying that I actually just zoomed in, and I pressed delete from the scene and, and they were deleted immediately. So they're now gone. But um, what we can do is uh, um, the way that we have these configuration options set up is um, we could actually build build in a, a yes, no sound option for that. So that wouldn't be a problem. But yeah, that's a very good point. OK. <laughs> if, so that's, if, I, um, if I heard you correctly, yeah, though, you, you actually said, if I heard you correctly, Fai, you said something like five or six simultaneous feeds is what you think actually, you can achieve, which is... Uh, to be honest, AI, I'm, I'm honestly not sure of how many um, screens you can show at once. Do you know, Edmund? Just to let you know, we set up 15 screens in a test area on Open VCE. And basically, as we walked, looked around the room with those feeds on, roughly six, maybe seven, but around six was active. And as soon as you moved to the seventh or eighth with your camera, the others started turning off. So we think it's okay. only about six or seven. And that's well, on a completely know, unloaded island. This would be, it would be interesting just to take about, um, you take a whole bunch um, on the same plane and, 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 and res them and see. Um, I'll, we'll have to check that out. I, I do know that if you do move your camera out of the field of view of the shared media, then it, it will reset. And actually, um, what happens with our shared media reser is if you do that, it, when you look at the shared media reser again, it may take a few seconds to, to take you back to where you were. So uh, that's right. Um, it's it's important in a classroom context that because you you may not know what people are looking at, um, and and people may not have the same experience if you try to design your classroom with too many feeds on. Yeah, and yeah. right now, um, yeah. right now, I none of our team. tools are really we. The only tool that we work we have to be uh, clever about for for synchronous display is our scoreboard, and we've. We're, we've been working on that using some fancy uh, jQuery and um, and uh, uh, polling. So that's the only screen, though, that we really have had to worry about. Um, all the other tools that we we have for Saludo 2 in the classroom are only things like the signs and the Twitter wall. So they're not that important that it's synchronous, but um, right. it's a definite problem, yeah. So, so this four, is um, fourteen uh, let years me just set see. up and it's not working. So, say again. I have fourteen screens right here with Google on them. And if you move uh -huh. your camera in closely, you can see them. But if you move away, it only shows a one or two. So I see. Okay. So that's um, that's that's um, that's an important design feature. Um, that like. Eventually, what we'd like to do is we'd like to really um, improve the, the quiz chair so that the quizzes can be shown on, on shared media. Um, and if it's just for that one student, it'd probably be OK. But um, I guess if we're going to have uh, any group quizzes, we'll have to consider what to do there. This is basically, um, this is basically um, just to wrap up, this is basically um, it. <laughs> what we've done is we've we've added the ability to create scenes, so it makes it easy for you to 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 create and uh, move your items and save the locations. Um, we've added the ability to conf for configuration to be a lot easier using shared media. We've added a shared media scoreboard, which I really wanted to show you today, um, and we've added the backpacks, which um, again I think are really fun. And then we've we've created this turnkey uh, avatar classroom solution. Um, the the backpacks are a lot of fun, uh, just to give you an idea of what they can do, um, and we will, we will be demoing this soon. Um, I created this little tiny little gecko, this little lizard, and when the students come up to it, they would, they would click on the gecko, 
and the gecko would check their backpacks and, and see if they had any food in their backpacks. And if not, the gecko would say, oh, you know, I'm hungry, go, go collect some food. So then the students would have to go around the island and find the food and then click on that food. And when they did, that food would automatically be added to their backpack. So then when the next time they came and touched the gecko, programmably it would be smart enough to know, oh, the student has food. And then it would, it would, take, it would say, oh, thank you for feeding me. So using that kind of um, a fetch and gather and check um, response um, scenario, you could really adapt that to many role-playing role playing, um, situations, I think. So with that, I guess um, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. It's now 7.40, so we've got about 20 minutes. Um, is there any questions or is there anything that anyone would like to discuss about Sludel 2, the future, or, or its current state? Thank you very much, Fire. Um, there's a question in the text chat from Kaylee saying, will this new system have the free mail blogger available? Uh, um, we haven't done it yet, but I think we will. And for those of you that don't know, what the free mail blogger does is it's a uh, it's a Moodle module, separate Moodle module, um, that we that we adapted in an earlier Sludel version, that allows you to send a uh, a snapshot, Second Life snapshot, to a specific email address, and then that e that that snapshot will be included as um, and the snapshot text will be included as a uh, Moodle blog post for that student who who sent the snapshot. It's a really nice feature. Um, a lot of people had trouble setting it up previously on their Moodle um, servers, so, so that's kind of um, why it hasn't been in the, I think in the, it's been a kind of an extra feature that, um, that hasn't been in core Sludel. Um, obviously, the nice thing about our situation with Avatar Classroom is that we run the servers so we can make sure that, you know, it's all set up um, how we want for Sludel. Um, but it should, it should also be, um, I, th I think it'll still work with, uh, with Sludel 2 on, on regular Sludel. Um, and we do want to put it into Avatar Classroom, or it's, although it's not quite our top priority right now. Thanks, Edmund. Okay, Carilla asks, uh, with the Avatar Classroom advantage, is that Ed and... Oh, she's just typing when I'm... No, it was that. <laughs> okay. Okay, Singh asks, is uh, this available on other grids outside of Second Life? Um, well, uh, how about Kitely? Um, this is our next step. What we're, what Ed and I wanted to do uh, for uh, first was to make sure we could get a system that's working in the in the stable version of Second Life. Once we have everything working crystal clean, um, then we can, and all the errors have been isolated, then we can start transferring it to OpenSim. So if any new bugs ap appear, we'll know that it's it's uh, um, a, an OpenSim thing. Yeah, just to add to that. Um... So, as you saw, we've used shared media in a few quite important places. Um, so, we, we've, um, we've designed Sludel 2 basically on the, the assumption that you can use shared media. Now, most people's open SIM grids probably can handle shared media right now, but a lot of the third-party clients can't yet. Um, so, I think it's going to be a little bit longer until everybody using open SIM is on one of those version 2 or version 3 clients. Um, and um, at that point, we'll you know we'll we'll probably get um, go into OpenSim on, in quite on quite a big way. I, I think r right now it's just a little bit too early um, to uh, for people to be able to use it because so many of the clients that people used can't support it yet. Yeah. 